So what I was doing yesterday is I was showing how you can actually use the Aurora MR, and it doesn't really matter. They're all essentially the same. They have some slight differences, like one of them can carry one SCU of cargo. Um, but the the weapons layout that the individual uh, ships have is, are essentially the same. They have the same systems for the most part, and they, they have the same kind of capacity for the different weapons that you can use. And yesterday I was just using the default loadout, so I was trying to demonstrate how easy it is to make credits even using a basic ship in the game. And in 35 minutes, or uh, it was right around 35 minutes, made 100,000 credits. And a lot of guys in the game are saying, you know, like they'll say like, you know, oh, that's like a really weak ship. You really can't do anything with it. But it... Any ship that you use in Star Citizen can have the potential for doing missions. It just depends on really what you're looking for. And as a starter ship, the Aurora can be used as a tool for making UEC in the game that you can later on use to purchase other equipment in the game. You can, And it's also upgradable. So what I, want, what I wanted to demonstrate today is the potential for actually upgrading the ship and again, the MR is the cheapest ship, the you know, the, the space-capable ship that you can actually purchase within Star Citizen. I think that the original package price on it was right around $45, and then there was a discount on Squadron 42 at the same time. So, I and I explained this before, I, I've been a backer going back to 2014, and you haven't put a lot of money into the game. Uh, have bought like a few ships. I uh, what I have right now is that I purchased outright is the uh, the Aegis Avenger Titan Renegade, which is a really cool little ship. I like the coloring on it. Um, I ended up buying the Hornet Wildfire, and I paid a lot more than I probably should have for it. Unfortunately, I ended up getting it from another group. It was uh, gray market, and I'm not going to mention the name. Uh, some people use it, but I don't want to plug names for gray market. Uh, that's not what I'm here for. Uh, then I bought the. I originally had a freelancer, I had up, or I had upgraded to the Cutlass Black, and then the freelancer, the standard freelancer. Then when the freelancer mist came out, I ended up purchasing that uh, and melting down the uh, Cutlass. I decided to keep the Miss because the Miss is an incredibly versatile ship, and I wanted something that could haul cargo, and I didn't want to get rid of the Miss. And I'm like, you know, I really like the Miss a lot. It's a great ship, and and I want something that I can haul with. But I didn't really want to buy a um, uh, a Star Lifter, or or uh, uh, is it the Star Fair? I can't remember. I get the two mixed up. Uh, and I started looking at the Freelancer Max, and the Freelancer Max can carry almost as much uh, cargo. And um, it was still available for purchase. I, I, I believe it still is, but it carries 120 SCU. So I use that for hauling cargo when I'm doing runs back and forth from the mining uh, um, refineries. And it, you know, because it can carry 120 SCU. And usually what I do, or typically what I do, is I'll do four runs of mining with the prospector. And um, once those are done at the refinery, I'll go up there and I'll pick up everything with the Freelancer Max. And I'll take it back to Hurston or Arcorp and I'll sell it. There is a problem right now. And I mentioned this the other day. You cannot sell quantities of anything right now. And I, I know it's a bug. I've talked to other people in the game, and the the problem is is that a place like Art Corp is designed to handle massive quantities of, of anything that you bring in. It has a 5 million SEU overhead and also uh, has the ability to pay out 50,000 UEC every minute. And so if you go in there with a cargo hold, say, you know, like with a million credits worth of product, you may have to wait a little while, like let's say you're in a Caterpillar, but once you sell that, 
after you've completed that, you have to wait a little bit of time. You can't sell all of it at in, in one shot, obviously. So you might have to sell. You might have to do it like five or six times to sell your entire load of cargo. After you're done, it resets again, and then another fifty thousand UEC is available. So it should technically not run out of 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 uh, the ability to purchase material. Right now, there's a problem, and it's maxing out, or there's, like I said the other day, a decimal point got moved or something, and it's definitely screwed up. And the Star Citizen Trade Tools is directly right out of the, the tables that are inside the game. So I've kinda hol I'm kind of holding off on doing a little mining uh, right now until uh, I, we get another patch up and hopefully that'll fix it. I'll probably get up there and and do some mining demonstration though, taking it to the refinery. But as far as loading it up in the in the max and taking it back and selling it, it's kind of an exercise in futility right now. So what I've been doing is I've been focusing on kind of like ship configuration and doing a little bit of demonstration on how to do some of that. And this is really cool because this is a great opportunity to show the capability of some of these ships right now because um a lot of people kind of figure you know some of these starter ships are really kind of weak and worthless and stuff like that but i want to i want to show why they're really not and what you can do with them so this is a standard mr and if you if you scroll down here you can actually see some of the different systems that are actually on the ship all the way down to the thrusters and the radar system, which is called a capstan. Uh, you can't change out anything down here right now except for the paint. Uh, all the thrusters are fixed. And yesterday, essentially, we made about 100,000 credits. It was a little less. It was like 99,000 um, because one of the missions kind of bugged out. And I ended up doing uh, a, um, I did it, uh, um, another uh, task that I got paid for, so it wasn't it wasn't quite a hundred thousand credits, and this was just basically doing four of the missions where you uh, where you shut down the illegal surveillance around Hurston at the different comrades. Then I took you to Levski, and I did a quick calculation. If you bought some really decent armor, and I'm talking about like Inquisitor armor and a, and a decent helmet, you'd be spending about um, nine thousand. And then, um, so it was. It's a little bit more than that. If you get the uh, Desert Shadow, the custodian, or or one of the custodian machine guns. So I just basically calculated that right now. Um, after everything that I did, probably have like right around eighty-five thousand credits available from well, the mission that we did, or the missions that we did yesterday as a demonstration. And then. Um, I'm going to take that 85,000 and I'm going to upgrade the Aurora. So this is a standard Aurora. And you can see right here, it has the yellow jacket Gatling gun on it. And I, I demonstrated that these are actually quite effective, uh, especially at a close range. They, they just absolutely spit out a massive amount of projectiles in a very short period of time, especially if you have them overclocked. And um, when I click on overclock here, you'll see that it's going to take the damage per second up from 213 up to 320. So automatically, just working with the the systems that are there right now, you can increase the damage on the ship quite a bit just by overclocking this. So we're going from 427 DPS. And I, I'm not even going to consider the alpha damage right now because the 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 uh, Aurora really, you know, alpha damage is kind of meaningless on a ship like this. Um, it, but anyhow, so okay, so we go from 427 overclocking to 640. That's a significant jump in damage per second. Now the next thing that I want to talk about on this is gim is fixed versus gimbling. And um, again, this is just the standard Aurora. So if I take and it really doesn't matter on the size one because there really is no step down. Now, on most of the ships, when you when you put a gimbal on, what happens is that you're going to go from a, like a, a fixed size three down to a gimbal size two. But if I go and I, I go to fixed right here, it's basically I, I can only put on the same 
weapon that it originally had anyhow. So if you run into a situation like this, it's actually better off to use the gimbal. And you'll see why when we start working on, um, you know, some of the more expensive ships, you know, the difference between gimbaling and not gimbaling and what you're doing is you're reducing the size of the weapon and everything. I'm going to leave the gimbals on here right now and I'm going to keep these Yellow Jacket 210s. Then what I'm going to do here is I had to purchase some gimbals. I went around and I actually picked up everything to be, you know, to so I already had it. So when we jump into the game, I'm going to go ahead and configure the ship. But I'm going to go through this configuration right now. Um, and I'm going to, um, so like I said, I already went and picked up the equipment. So I'm going to put on a gimbal size one on these other points right here. And now, now you have to add a weapon. And I'm a huge fan of these um, uh, laser repeaters. They're NDBs. They're, they have a really fast firing rate, and they do a decent amount of damage, um, and they don't overheat. And I really like weapons, first of all, that, that have that kind of capability and don't overheat. I've been playing around with, like, the Gatling, the Revenant ballistic Gatling gun, and the biggest problem with the Revenant is that it jams. And it doesn't jam off, it jams on. So you'll be firing it, and then it'll jam on, and then it'll overheat and it'll finally stop, and then you can then you can put it back on again. Um, and I'll I'll demonstrate some of that later on. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use all all four of these are going to be gimbaled weapons, and then we're going to um, uh, go ahead and we're going to overclock these. So we've taken a ship that started out with just over 400 uh, damage per second up to 1,350. And we see an alpha of 190 again. That That's if you fire everything. That's if you fire your missiles and you're firing your weapons at the same time. Um, uh, this, there's a difference between damage per second and then damage. So the damage is basically if, you, if like one burst of everything. So it's kind of hard to calculate like a one burst of the Gatling gun. I mean, that's basically firing like one projectile, one uh, burst of the laser, and, and, and one uh, shot at your missiles. Uh, the next one down here is turrets, and of course the uh, Aurora MR. None of the Auroras have turrets on them, and these would be manable turrets. And then what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to change these missiles. And the reason that I'm going to be changing these missiles out is that right now cross section and um, uh, is not something that's implemented in the game correctly it's too easy to spoof it uh, and there are three different types of missiles there's cross-section there's infrared and then there are electromagnetic and typically most ships when you're in combat and you're you know you're cranking up the power on your your shields and your you got your weapons uh, overclocked what you're doing is you're generating a higher level of uh, electromagnetic energy you'll notice right here see electromagnetic energy is 21886 if I take away the overclocking you'll notice that the electromagnetic drops down a bit it's not a huge drop but these aren't huge weapons anyhow um, but if you're overclocking like big weapons like size fours, your EM is going to jump a lot. And then the other thing is especially like your shields, depending on the type of shields that you have. And I'm going to go into this right now because this is really important. These are industrial grade shields. Industrial grade shields are very strong. They have a lot of resistance to um, uh energy weapons, and even projectiles. But the problem is, is that they create a lot of electromagnetic energy. That electromagnetic energy translates into somebody that's using missiles that are EM capable of better tracking and being able to fire on you. So I'm going to show you the difference here real quick. I have these overclocked right now, and the shields that I have in here right now are bulwark. They're, they are the, or bulwark, not exactly sure how to pronounce that bulwark, um, but they are the uh, they're the the stock shields that come in the auroras. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some uh, military grade shields. Right now, our EM signature is twenty nine and a half thousand. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these down into military, okay? All right. And something's not right. That should be less. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm not. I'm not sure what why this is number is increasing. I'll have to take a look into that, or I'll have to ask what's going on there. But anyhow, the 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 important thing. Of, oh, you know what? It's probably because it's going from to a grade A. That's why. So if I go to a military or industrial palisade, okay. So we're up to thirty two. And this is a grade A, uh, and it's got 79 HP. And uh, let's go back to the military. We'll go back to the FR-66s. The, the important thing about the military is that they can regenerate quicker. But when you're running the ship, they they don't generate as much energy. It's, it's one of the um, – or there's a reduction – I'll have to look into it. That's still something that I'm not completely understanding. But the but the idea is that you don't create as much of a signature for the the electromagnetic missiles to be able to hit. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to switch these to task force. Now the total damage between the cross section marksmen actually uh, um, I don't know if there's a significant change. What do we got here? It's actually going to go up a little bit, it looks like. So Markman is going to go 5184 damage. And Electromagnetic Task Force is going to bring it up to 5700. So we got a little bit of a gain there. Then the other thing that I'm doing on here, too, is that I do not have to change the power plant. And the reason that we don't have to change the power plant, because even though I've got all these shields and the weapon's overclocked, and I've got these gimbals on here. Everything that you add is going to increase the amount of power. I have an overhead on power of 39.97, um, and um, uh, uh, I believe that's megawatts. And I'm only using, with everything maxed out, uh, I'm using 28.42. Now, I could increase that. This is an industrial grade. Let's see here. If I go to a military grade... It's going to drop a little bit, and and it doesn't really change my EM uh, all that much. Um, so let's see, I could go up to a Breton, but this gives me like a huge amount of overhead that I really don't need, and it's increasing my electromagnetic signature. So probably the Roughneck, just leaving that in there is fine because that's going to keep my EM down. Coolers, um, these are, again, industrial grade, and we could probably replace them. We've got lots and lots of overhead. We could probably go down to Glacier, but I'm not really seeing any, um, I'm not really seeing any benefit as far as the EM. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to leave the hydrocells in there. And I'm not going to change out the quantum drive. We could drop our travel time down on the quantum drive. Right now it's 138. Uh, 1,000 uh, kilometers per second is what you're traveling. And we could probably drop or we could probably um, uh, increase our uh, uh, velocity a little bit. The problem with doing that is that when you increase the, um, the, uh, the speed, what happens is that automatically you are um, you're reducing the amount of distance that you can actually travel. So I'm going to leave the EOS in there. So we can. So it it, it tells you like from Port Alisar to Hurston is going to take you six and a half minutes. From Port Alisar to Ar Arcorp is seven and a half minutes. Like if I were to change this out, go into like a burst, um, you'll say. You'll see what the what's changing here is like Port Alisar to Microtech. That means that I have to refuel in between. I can't go the whole distance. So you're using a lot more fuel. It's taking you less time. And I don't really see any benefit. You're going Port Alisar to Arcorp in 6 minutes and 47 seconds as opposed to what it was at 7 minutes. 
So we'll go back to the um, EOS. So I'm not really seeing any benefit to that. Um, we could probably go up to, uh, you know, like, well, let's see, a voyage. And that's going to take us up to 157. I'm not going to worry about that right now. That drops us down to six minutes going from Port Alisar to Hurston. That's not really a huge change. So I, I don't know. I, it, to me, it's not it's not really worth doing that, you know, to take 30, shave 30 seconds off the time. But these changes right here, like the task force, the FR-66 and um, the N, uh, NDB-26s and the Yellow Jacket, this is a significant jump in, in your uh, damage and also your power consumption and stuff like that. And what I did is I already put it in the cart earlier. So we started out with 85,000 is what we had available after buying some equipment. All right, and then um, minus the cost for these upgrades, the FR-66 is, and this is nice. This shows you where you can purchase the equipment. So I went to Dumper's Depot at Levski, and I picked up the FR-66s and the gimbal mounts. I already had some, but I just went ahead and got them anyhow. Um, I always like to have spares. And then I went back to Area 18. Uh, I took my Aegis Avenger, and I picked up the NBD-26s and the Task Forces. I pick, picked up a whole bunch of uh, Task Force missiles. I like to buy a, a lot of spares of that. And the total amount was uh, 48000 So if I take uh, the 48, $85 minus 48000 That leaves me with 37,000. So all, already you can see that you've done some significant upgrades to the ship and it didn't cost you an arm and a leg to do that. And, and, um, uh, and you also made money uh, doing the missions that I that I uh, set out for you. We'll go ahead and empty the cart. We don't need that anymore. I already saved this, and this is another reason that I like Urkel a lot. So these are the ships that I'm uh, always going in here and configuring. So I'm going to go into this MR primary, and I'm going to load that. And you'll see that I already put this in here. I've got the task forces, uh, task force missile. I've got the yellow jacks, jackets and the NBD-26s, and the FR 66s and I left everything else the same. And and then again, this is the nice thing about doing this is that you can actually save your changes. So uh, if I go in here and I change this to overclock or not overclock and then I hit save and then I say update loadout in hangar, um, I can overwrite the one that I have in there already and, and it'll save those changes. So it'll save uh, the way that you have it set for, uh, you know, overclock. All right, so right now what we're going to do, we're going to take, now that we've purchased the equipment, I have to adjust my chair a little bit. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into SC. I have a problem with my chair. It doesn't want to, the wheels don't want to lock where I want them, which kind of sucks. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the the configuration of the Aurora by putting this equipment in. Uh, and then we're going to go out and we're going to try it again on that mission. And that sounds like a lot of fun. So let's go back over here to uh, I use open broadcaster in case anybody is wondering. I really like it a lot. And um, we're going to go ahead and get uh, Star Citizen up and running here. I have to set up my track IR. I really like track IR. Um, I know I talked about that the other day. I'm a big fan of it. I don't have VR, and I have um, neurological problems, and I can't use uh, VR, so uh, so I'm kind of stuck with using the track IR, but I've been really happy with it.
So while this is loading, I'll just uh, talk a little bit about some of the stuff that we're, you know, we're doing in here as we load up the game. So I load up my track IR, and then I've got Star Citizen actually loading here. And then when I get to the load screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the uh, console. And I'm going to put in the R tab uh, 1 for the display info and hit enter. And that way I can see the health of the server and I can see my frame rate. Uh, I actually had to jump on to one of the um, European servers because the I was getting some weird problems from the USA servers that it, it was they were they kept crashing out and 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 I wasn't able to purchase equipment and that happens every once in a while so sometimes what I'll do is I'll just jump on the EU servers and use them instead. And then today what we're going to do is we're going to go back down to Hurston and we're going to buy a ship. We're going to buy a, or we're going to take a look at some of the different ships that are available and we're going to go through them. We're going to try this out first, so I don't want to bore you too much with um, spending a lot of time, you know, showing me doing combat because I, I, that isn't really going to going to help you out all that much. You can do that on your own. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the different ships that you can purchase and we're going to look at the different configurations and then we'll purchase a ship and we'll start uh, working on uh, setting up a loadout for it. I think they've been doing some maintenance to the servers on the backside because uh, a lot of stuff has kind of been getting cleaned up a little bit. And you can kind of tell when it's running kind of crappy when you get in here and then they'll 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 do something to it and they'll it'll like the next day it'll be nice and smooth so uh, I know that they're constantly doing maintenance to stuff and 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 uh, again some people sometimes people get really frustrated well, let me make sure I got my helmet on good to go and we can do it right here we don't have to actually uh, go down but what we're gonna do is we'll pull up the Aurora we'll go into the vehicle loadout manager and uh, now we're going to grab the ship here and see this is taking a little while to load um, and I'm not exactly sure why it seems like some of the stuff is kind of acting a little funny um, I bought a lot of extra missiles I usually do and the reason I do that is because I hate running back and forth and picking them up so I'll go ahead and save that change alright I'm not changing anything on the propulsion we're going to leave that alone. I've got a Goliath I could throw in there, but I'm just going to leave the EOS in there. I'm leaving the coolers alone. I'm leaving the power plant. I'm changing the shield genera generators out to FR-66s. And I bought extras. I always usually get an extra, you know, just so, you know, because something weird happens. Sometimes you'll get a crash and you'll, you'll lose a component. All right, and then on weaponry, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to, on the left wing. And I'm, I'm not sure if I want to change this or not. Well, let's see. Let's see what it looks like when I put it on the left wing. Yeah, you know what? I'll do that. I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave the uh, Gatling guns underneath. So we're going to put a uh, gimbal mount, and then I'm going to put on these NBD-26s. All right, so that's on this left wing up here, right, right up underneath there. Right wing, um, I'll go ahead and put on another uh, gimbal mount. And then on that gimbal mount, we'll put on the NBD-26. Uh, this is the missile rack. You can actually change the missile rack. So you can change it from a uh, 221 to a 212. The difference is that one holds um, one size two and um, the other one holds uh, um, two uh, two size uh, uh, or one size two and then the other one holds uh, two size ones that's the difference we'll go ahead and save the changes there and then um, what I'm gonna do is go back to the miscellaneous because now it's it changed it changed it back to the marksman and change it back to the default 
So now I gotta go ahead and hit the task force again. Okay, so underneath on the nose of the uh, ship, I've got the uh, Gatling guns up underneath here. And then on the up, the wings up above here, I've got the N, uh, NDB-26s. Like I said, propulsion didn't change. None of the systems changed except for the shields. And then we added the weaponry. We, we kept the Gatlings. I haven't changed the paint. You can actually purchase a, purchase a paint scheme for it, but I haven't done that. So uh, everything should be all set. We'll go ahead and uh, close that out and we'll head down. And then we'll take it for a spin and see how it does. So you saw yesterday when I was doing the missions, you saw how effective the Gatling guns were uh, against those little, uh, the, the you know, the, those little uh, surveillance uh, drones. And now we're going to uh, see how much more they are effective with the uh, NDBs on them. And I actually was able to take out a ship the other day with uh, a, a Drake uh, Buccaneer very, very easily with the um, with the Aurora. It was like no problem at all. The most important thing is that you always want to continue to move. You don't want to stay still, and you want to use that um, uh, you want to use that gimbal uh, decouple, or I mean the decoupled mode. So there's the Aurora. We're going to go ahead and retrieve that. All right, she's waiting for us down on pad three. Somebody's in the elevator there, getting, trying to get down to a pad. down to pad three. I always confirm it too. It says going down to pad three. While we're heading down there, I'm going to go, it's five kilometers. I'm going to go ahead and change my settings. So I'm going to go into options, key bindings in advance, and I'm going to make sure that my movement, I want to get rid of this here. I don't like the mouse wheel. Um, and then I'm going to go into um, controls. I got to go back to my hold ass control and for whatever reason, the in, inversion setting. Okay, so dy dynamic zoom is yes, and the inversion setting for my straightforward is set to yes. Okay, so uh, good to go. They keep get they keep changing back on me for for some reason. I'm not sure why. All right, here we are, and helmet on. Always confirm it. You can tell that it's on if you got your text on. Hit enter and okay, so text is on. And it's amazing how small this little ship looks on this huge pad. Again, you can land really large ships on these pads. I'm not sure if you can get a reclaimer on this. I don't. I'm, I don't think you can. But it'll handle really large ships. <laughs> And just to confirm, I've got the NDBs up there, and we'll look at the weapon panel and, and, and make sure, but um, they're there. And again, the other thing that's really cool about the Aurora is that I'm going to center my track arrow real quick. The other thing that's cool about the Aurora is that um, uh, the panel layout on it is really nice. I mean, you can see everything is like right there. A lot of ships, they, the panels are buried or, or moved in a position that makes it really hard to kind of pull stuff up and see what you're looking at. So if we zoom in on the um, the weapon panel, that's what this is right here. So you've got your power usage for your guns and your missiles, but we're going to go to the gun. And you can see that I've got the two NDB re repeaters. They don't have any ammo. They're, they're an energy weapon. And then you've got the yellow jacket Gatling guns. And we have 7,200 rounds available. Uh, also, the missiles, it shows that we've got the task force electromagnetic size one and two available. We'll go ahead and put that back on the guns. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the power setting. And I like to call this the, um, uh, the uh, flux capacitor. And we're going to go down here and we're going to overclock the yellow jacket. And we're going to overclock the um, uh, other yellow jacket and the ND, uh, NDB26s. And now we're going to overclock the shields. And I don't like the way that's set up. That's kind of annoying the way it's. Uh, and I need to overclock the radar. All right, and make sure we got everything overclocked. So radar. Both shields, uh, both uh, laser repeaters, and both uh, Gatling guns are set. And then I'm going to go to the uh, flux capacitor, and I'm going to set the power up the way I like it. So 50, 30, 20, fine. That's close enough. All right, good to go. And we're going to go ahead and take off. Take off. I'm going to set. After I put the landing gear up, I'm gonna make sure that my yeah, couple on right. mode works. It does, okay. And I don't have to test the countermeasures, I know they're working. And then the um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the gimbaled mode. So if I click on gimbaled mode, you can't really see it. There's actually two sets of dotted lines. There is a dotted line or a dotted circle for the Gatling guns Thank and there's a dotted circle it. for the NDBs. It's just the convergence is the same. So sometimes you'll see the convergence is slightly different. And so the circles might look a little different. All right, cool. So now we're ready to roll, we're ready to rock and roll. And we're going to pick a mission and we'll go ahead and head on out go to the contract manager and we're going to go down here to mer uh, to uh, mercenary and look at we've got four of them available okay so halt illegal illegal surveillance 20,000 UEC we'll accept that we'll do two uh, and and then we'll just leave it at that we're not going to uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time doing this right now we'll go ahead and track that because I want to get into uh, the um, uh, uh, going over like setting up a new ship in the ship configuration and we're going to go back to uh, studying that on the website so we can see the uh, uh, capabilities of some of the different ships that are available. Alright so gear up and um, uh, weapon systems ready to go. We're going to go ahead and jump to Magda. Um, and that is a server glitch when it does that. When you go to jump and it cancels on you, for some reason it'll do that. It's, it, it's weird. It's just a server lag. It's like it doesn't recognize the, 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 that you're trying to go into quantum travel. The biggest problem that you're going to have, that you're going to run into with firing your weapons when they're overclocked is obviously going to be overheating. Um, so, if I test these weapons right now and I hold it for about 10 seconds, I'm not getting any overheating at all. So, I really recommend that you do it as bursts though. Uh, but obviously, the, we're not having an overheat issue with the current weapon configuration to the point where it's a problem. And then we'll take, we'll look at the shields. Um, I've actually been getting attacked by other ships when I've been doing this. I'm going to set the speed limiter up a little bit and try to get out of that sun because that, that, that is really bright. All right, go to the comm array. All right, we're here. Now I'm going to go to scanning mode. All right, and I'm going to scan, and we're going to look for one of the boxes. And there we go, one is seven kilometer. We've got another one over that way. But we'll head to this one right here. I'm going to use that second line there. All right, there's a PDC monitor, and look how, you watch how fast these things go down. We're 2.9 kilometers from it. You can set the weapon convergence as well. I'll show you that. We're going to slow down a little bit here. Heading 
Okay, that was really fast for the school door. Okay, let's go back toward the uh, Comrade. We'll scan again. And it should be right above me. Or it was, anyhow. Somewhere in this direction, I think. Okay, there it is. Oh, and we got another one, like, right... Oh, no, that's the, uh, Comrade. Never mind. And we got somebody that's radar locking us, but we'll take out this PDC monitor first. So, we've got enemy, uh, that are actually tracking now. Alright. We got the gimbals on. And should be dead in a second here. Okay, there we got an overheat. There we go. All right, we're gonna find out who this is. All right, what do we got here? We got a Mantis. Should be an easy kill for us. Okay, we got a lock. Mantis is more of a ship for doing jamming. It's really not, not much of a fighter. More of a stealth operation. I think. There we go. All right. So he didn't take very long to kill. All right. Let's go find the other commer or the other uh, the other unit. And we did overheat. You heard the overheat. And that makes your weapons, when that happens, that all the automatically they just shut down. Now they're not really modeling the cooler. You're supposed to be able to increase the cooler rate, and they're not really modeling it right now. I don't think the coolers are actually. I think they're kind of like at a preset level right now, and you're not. You can't really change them. All right, we've got the other PDC monitors over here. Yeah, and you can tell those are AI ships because they move really kind of like herky-jerky. It's not like a human would fly. A human's going to fly in all kinds of different directions. All right, there's the PDC monitor right there. Or three kilometers from it. Man, the sun is right in the eyes. All right, we'll do it as bursts this time, and you can actually see the damage. There we go. See, that was fast. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, we have a Cutlass Black. We're not going to fight that Cutlass Black. We're going to get out of here. Cutlasses can be hard to kill. So we're going to scoop. Alright, and then we'll head on to the next mission. But we have to pull that up. All right, all the legal si uh, surveillance will track. All right, so we just made another 20K, and that was really quick. So you can see that you can knock these out really fast. But we want to go to the Comrade. And you can you also see that that mantis didn't even scratch my shield. I mean, the she the FR 66s regenerate so fast on a mantis in, on, on an AI mantis. He's he's not. I mean, unless you're standing still, he's not even going to scratch your shields. And again, it's really it, it, the man, the whole purpose of the mantis is to um, is to quantum jam anyhow. So AI mantis is uh, kind of silly to have it in there. But we'll see if we can come up with a come up against a ship like a Drake Buccaneer or something like that. We'll see if it pulls it up. We'll see if we can put it to the test on that. And we'll see how the shields do, how they hold up. 
All right, we're here, and we're going to go ahead and scan. Uh, we got to get a little closer, probably. And I love the the, the new six degrees freedom of movement in here with the uh, track IR. It's just, a, I mean, I can look all the way back behind me. It's really nice to be able to see that now. We've waited a long time for that. Oh, there we got a box over here. I'm gonna head toward that. And I'm using my afterburner to check the the curvature of my turn. So like I point toward it, but you're gonna continue to arc around a little bit so that what the afterburner does is that it that it um, it checks your your turn. What do we got here? Is that another PDC monitor? Okay, we got two of them, like, right in the same spot. That's nice. Okay. 2,400. I'm cycling the targets is what I'm doing. Okay, one, two, three, four. We'll do it again. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, wow. Four bursts. Four seconds each. All right, let's do that again. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, well, three times. Um, and then the other thing too is that um, you got to remember. Oh, good, we got a buccaneer. So we'll we'll shoot a missile at him. Um. Three seconds or four seconds is quite a long time. We got a missile off on him. All right, take this one down real quick. He's all his shield already toast. <laughs> nice. Oh, we got another one here. What is this? Oh, another mantis. You know, holding a gun, you know, like weapon down for more than a few seconds is actually a very, very long time. Like in World War II on the, um, you know, like on the old World War II planes, you know, you would actually overheat the guns and and they would, they would warp and then jam, you know, so you just, it's just not something that you do in real life. So, I mean, just like in real life, you know, you, you're, if you overheat, you're causing damage, especially when you have stuff overclock. So just always keep that in mind. If you're going to learn how to fight other people, you know, if you're going to use gimbals or if you're not going to use gimbals, it's really important that you're aiming, you know, that you're, that you're really good at aiming. Otherwise, you're just going to end up, you know, wasting a lot of shots and overheating your weapons. So it's all about bursting um, and always making sure that you're getting uh, around on the target. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And he's, he's gone. And then, what do we got here? We got another Cutlass Black. I'm gonna get out of here. I don't really feel like fighting a Cutlass in this thing. I can. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. What the hell? Okay, so I got paid for that. We'll go ahead and put a missile on. And he's got the scat. The AI love the scatter guns. Get a missile off on him. Okay, so he hasn't even dented my shields. All right, his shields are already down. Weapons system critical. System. All right, gotta watch watch that first rate. Shields down. All right, let's move. Oh, he took I took damage. All right, shields are down a little bit. Let's see where he's at. 
Okay, he's damaged. Watch those scatter guns. See, I'm not really affecting his shields all that much. Oh, no, he's taking damage. That was good. Well, he's barely even scratching my shield, though. So what's happening is that we've got, uh, we've got uh, ballistics that are getting through. All right, so yeah, see, he's hitting me, so we're gonna get out of here. Shields, nice. Well, we put up a good fight, uh, and that's not too bad for an RR, so you know. Uh, you can imagine how good some of these weapon systems can work on some of the other ships. And then the other thing, too, is that the shields held for the most part. I mean, they were dropping, but they were regenerating at a very rapid rate. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and head back to Hurston. Actually, we're right here. We'll head back to uh, uh, Everest Harbor. taken. We'll go ahead and clear that. Hmm. Maybe it's because I'm too close. All right, well, let's just go ahead and see if we can lock it in. Probably because I'm too close. Too shabby for the little Aurora. You know, and a a, um, a Cutlass is a is a tough ship to try to kill, especially with like little guns that this thing has. Uh, if you gang up on them, if you've got a couple of Auroras going up against a Cutlass, you'll chew them up really quick. You get a couple of people working at them easily. Oh, that was fun. Um, and then we made uh, 40,000 uh, UEC just doing those two missions with very little risk. So let's see what we've got here as far as damage is concerned. Probably minimal. I'm looking at the uh, graphic image of the ship down here, and I mean, I, I, I don't really see any damage uh, to speak of. I mean, it's probably minimal. So let's go ahead and slow down. And we'll go ahead and call uh, the landing control. Please proceed to assign landing bay. So you can definitely see that the Aurora has capability in the, in the game or the simulation. Um, it is not a, it's not a slouch by any stretch. I mean, if you can keep your speed up, which is the most important thing, is making sure that you keep your velocity up. Uh, and, um, you know, if you tag team with somebody else, you know, if somebody else has got an Aurora and you're going to go in and there, you can even do bounty hunting missions against other players with an Aurora if you've got a couple of people to do it. And you could easily gang up on a, on a, a player that's got a much, much better ship than you have and take them out if, you're, if your Aurora is configured correctly in order to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and see what kind of damage that we took. Probably minimal, I'm guessing. Very, very minimal. Okay, so it says 131 UEC to repair. We're gonna go ahead and repair, we'll restock. Um, of course, we used ballistics and we used missiles. And then we'll go ahead and confirm that. 
And so, just working on that mission, you'll you'll uh, see that you it'll it should repair. There we go. See it repaired. It was that just that tiny little section right in front that repaired. So, forty thousand UEC, right? In literally 15, 20 minutes, and then we add that to the thirty-seven that we had. So that's seventy-seven thousand. UEC between yesterday and today, just doing five of those um, or six of those uh, um, missions, shutting down the illegal surveillance. Engines are off. All right. So now what we're going to do is actually what we should do. Hang on, I'm going to. We're going to change what we're going to do here. Nope. Actually, I, no, I changed my mind again. Let's go. We'll go ahead and back on out because I I want to go through some of the different uh, ships that are available. So here I'm going to go ahead and lock lock this. It'll lock my track iron, and then we're going to go back to the window capture. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at some of the different ships that are available in the different configurations based on uh, some of the information that we've had. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this, uh, let's see here, we're going to go to this one that's down here. It's this um, uh, fat, uh, did I lose it? What did I do with the link? It's the focus. Oh, I thought I bookmarked it. I thought I had bookmarked it the other day. SC focus. Oh yeah, there it, it's down there. Okay, all right, I'm not looking. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the um, uh, Alpha 312. All right, and we're going to go to the sales and rental prices. And we're going to do a little bit of ship comparison today. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom, um, or let's see, where is it at here? Ship reviews, first of all. And the best ships in Star Citizen. Okay, so right now we've got a list. Basically, it says best single seater ships, best snub ships, um, best two player multi crew, uh, best capital ships, best money making ships. Why don't we start with this? We'll we'll pick the best single seater ships. All right, and we're going to look at what it says for single crew fighter. We're going to focus on that for right now. I don't do any bombing, per se. I do a little bit of car uh, cargo hauling. Um, they also have, like, single crew starter, and this is basically what we've, what we've seen as far as what's available. So you've got your Mustang, you've got your Aurora, the Gladius, um, and then the, um, the Sabre. Uh, and then the Hornet, the F7C, and then they've got the the bombers down here. But what I'd like to look at is just like if when people say like what is a like a best pure fighter. Okay, so single uh, that was the right one that I was on single crew fighter. All right, and what are they saying? So um, uh, let's see here. So they are saying right now that the best single-seat fighter ship in Star Citizen is these two right here, the Aegis, the Aegis Sabre and the, the, the Super Hornet. Now, the problem with the Super Hornet is this, is that it is a two-person ship, and you cannot gimbal. You can't use the turret uh, or the gimbaled turret in single-player mode. So if you're flying the Super Hornet as a single person, then you're there. You've got two guns that are essentially useless to you. So, 
if you take a light fighter, um, and and what I would consider to be something that's kind of like in between that, the choices like a light fighter and the Super Hornet, to me it would be the the F7C. But let's take a look at this the Saber, and what we'll do is we'll compare that uh, to like say the Hornet F7C. I have the uh, Hornet. Um, wildfire and you can't purchase it in game uh, what you can buy is if we go back to the other page here and um, we look at um, let's see locations or let's see um, uh, you go back to ships all right and then um, I, I have a little trouble navigating in here for some reason uh, for whatever uh, I don't know it's uh, this this layout in here is a little hard for me to navigate through. So we'll go back to Alpha 3, um, and then we'll go to, um, uh, let's see here, just, uh, oh, yeah, we'll just go back to Ship Reviews, Best Ships in Star Citizen, uh, and then it should show you where you can purchase them. Where did I go to the wrong location? I might have gone to the wrong. Oh, let's go back here. Carter ships. No, this isn't where I wanted to go to. I'm really sorry. I'm really bad at navigating this. Um, I thought it was back here on ship reviews. Best ships in Star Citizen. There's a list of where you can purchase them at. God, I'm terrible at navigating this stuff. Uh, all right, let me go back here. Alpha 312. Oh, here we go, sale and rental prices. Okay, so that's under economy. Okay, all right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the different ships and where you can purchase them. So sorry about that. Uh, these are essentially locations that you can purchase ships. And then down a little lower is rental. So we're going to focus on purchasing because that's really what you want to shoot for. Is you want to uh, shoot for purchasing them. So at Teaches... Uh, at Levski is kind of a little bit more of a pirate kind of location, or at least it was originally. And so you have the Drake Caterpillar and you have the Drake Cutlass Blue. Um, and then you have the Asperia Blade along with, you know, you can purchase the Prospector at a couple of different locations. The Cutlass Red, which is really just a, it's not really a fighter, it's a, it's a, um, uh, a hospital ship. Okay, and we see that at Teaches you can purchase the Hornet F7C here. You can also get the Buccaneer. So let's go ahead and, and, and write some of these down. So the um, F7C Buccaneer. Uh, and then we already have the Aurora. We're going to assume that you already have that. So you can get it at these two locations. Then at New Deal in Lorville, you can purchase. Well, we're gonna skip like the Mustangs right now because these are starter ships. We're gonna we're gonna talk. Can, we're gonna focus on something that you can go up to. All right. So the um, the Saber right here. Okay, and um, the Saber is two point one million. So we'll look at that. Then the other one that we're going to look at is going to be the Gladius. Uh, and then um, what was the other one that we were looking at? Let's see here. Got to go back to the list. So we've got to remember that's in economy. All right. And then we'll go to ship reviews. 
And the best ships in Star Citizen, what are they saying again? They're saying a uh, single crew fighter. Um, so we're looking at the Hornet. We're looking at the, um, the Saber, the Aegis Saber. This isn't really a fighter. Uh, let's see here. Like I said, it's more of a stealth ship. So what do we want to pick here? What else was there? The Gladius, the, um, and again, like I said, the Super Hornet is not really something that we'll look at for a single seater. And we're not focusing on mining right now. And you can forget all these origins. They're not fighters. Cullis Black is a two-person uh, ship. We can compare that. We might as well do the Cutlass, too. And the Cutlass is not expensive, um, and it's a great ship for people to, to pick. Um, and the Terrapins, not really great fighters, apparently, um, according to everything that people have said about them. And if we go down here, again, we look at the ships that, these are the most flown. So you got the Aurora, which is the starter. You got the Drake Cutlass Black. And the um and the Andromeda and then the Titan and the Hornet. I'm really a huge fan of the Hornets. The top kills again, Anvil Arrow. Why don't we take a look at the Anvil Arrow? And so we're gonna look at the Anvil Arrow. So that's six ships that we can compare. We're gonna we're not gonna look at the Vanguard because the Vanguard is a hu is a is a medium fighter. And it's expensive. It's like to equip it. It's like four and a half million. The Titan. We can take a look at the Titan too. The the Titan is a um, more of cargo hauling. Same thing with the Cutlass. But it's a small ship, and so that gives us seven ships that we can can, can compare. All right. Now we're going to go back to the calculator here, and we're going to go to ships and vehicles on the left hand side, and then we're going to select these. So we're going to go down through the list here. We're going to select the um, the arrow. Um, and let's take, you can't buy the Renegade, so let's take the Titan. The Renegade is something that you have to, you, you could only purchase on the site. All right, and then we'll look at the, um, the Cutlass, Cutlass Black. It's like one of the most popular ships in the game. Uh, and then um, the Gladius. Uh, and then um, the F7C Hornet. And then the uh, Saber. And that should be all of them, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. What am I missing? I got the arrow, uh, cutlass, F7. Oh, the buccaneer. Uh, that's what I was going to pick. Yeah, the buccaneer. I actually have the buccaneer too, and it's a great ship. All right, now what we're going to do here is, now that we've selected these, we've selected these seven, we're going to hit compare selected. All right, and that's our seven ships. So the Arrow, the Titan, the Buccaneer, the Cutlass, the F7 Hornet, and then the Gladius and the Sabre. And they're basically saying that the Sabre is, uh, as, as a stealth fighter, is actually scoring more kills in the game than a lot of ships. And we're going to look at some of the different specifications as far as that's concerned. Now, stealth. The interesting thing about stealth in the game is that it is modeled, um, but if you put in, if you bring up your weapon systems up to a level that, um, you know, where you're you're outputting a lot of power, obviously you're reducing your stealth. So the problem with a, a lot of the stealth fighters is that um, if you start changing out components, you have to be careful because if you start raising your um, EM signature up a lot, uh, what's going to happen is that now you go from, you're no longer a stealth ship. All right, so um, the, the next thing that we're going to do as far as comparison is concerned is we're going to look at the, the health percentage or the health 
uh, potential of the ship itself or the health points. And we're going to start uh, from the top. If you see here the hull, and you notice that not only the shield, but the hull of the, the Drake Cutlass Black, when I was hitting it with two of those NBD-26s and uh, two of the, the uh, G210 Gatlings, even though I was scoring hits on it with the gimbal weapons and his shield were down, he it was going to take a long time for me to damage that ship. It, it takes size twos and threes to really take down a Cutlass. And they consider the Cutlass to be more of a multi-role ship than it really is like a single ship fighter. And it is, it is a two-person ship, so you can have one person that's piloting, and it has a um, uh, it has a turret that you can hop into. And one of the things that's really nice about Star Citizen now, and it's it's really kind of growing and developing, is that the ability to work together as two people in the same ship is much better now than it was. Um, even going back, you know, just like a couple of patches ago, it was really bad last year. If you tried to do any kind of multi-person combat in ships, uh, the desynchronization was so bad that it, it made it almost impossible to do that. Now, the, the, the downside of the Cutlass is its turning ability. So this is where you're going to see a difference in the ships as far as the, where, where it gets a little bit more refined in the capability. You'll notice that the pitch, uh, and, and this is the number of degrees per second that you can turn. So on the Cutlass, the pitch in degrees and seconds and the yaw in degrees and seconds is really low, say, or not really low, but low compared to, say, like an Avenger Titan. The Avenger Titan is obviously a much smaller ship, but your roll rate, you know, is going to definitely eat into your ability to be able to turn on to an opponent like, like if you look at the Cutlass right here, 95 degrees per second, whereas like in a Sabre, 230, uh, and a Gladius, 260. This is a huge difference. So when you're looking, and, and I don't even really particularly like that the roll rate of like, uh, or um, and the uh, turning rate of the Buccaneer. Uh, a lot of people really like it a lot, but the problem is, and the weapon systems on it, we'll do we'll do some comparison on it. But if you look at the the um, the roll and the pitch rate, it really is kind of like an a, at a disadvantage to something like say the saber, or even the um, uh, the hornet. Okay, and then now look at the pricing in game. So. Now the Cutlass is one of the most popular ships that you can purchase in the game, at 1.3 million. So, it, it, yeah, um, if you compare that with the cost of the Saber, at 2.1 million, okay, um, or you compare it with like say the Buccaneer. You know, the Buccaneer is a little bit more than the than the Cutlass Black. But again, the Cutlass Black is is one of the most popular ships in the game, but a lot of people die in the Cutlass Black. It, it scores a lot of kills, but it also it, it has some disadvantages in weapon size. Okay, so now if we go over here to the, um, uh, let's see, do they have it in here? Um, I don't know if they have it in here. We'll have to open up the other screen here. Uh, so we're going to eliminate the Buccaneer here, and we're going to eliminate the Titan too. Um, the Titan is a good ship, but its damage per second as a starter ship is kind of more along the lines of like a um, Aurora. It only carries three weapons and four missiles total, uh, so it has a size three in the that you can put, or a size four that you can put in the nose, and size twos on the wings, and so between that. You're really not doing a lot, a heck, a heck of a lot more damage than you would be doing on an Aurora. So, um, and again, it's a starter ship. So, I think what I'm going to do is um, let's go ahead and take that out. Uh, and um, the price is good for the Titan at 785. But again, being a starter ship, I really don't think that we want to be comparing that. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll keep the the cutlass. We'll keep the hornet. We'll keep the um. We'll keep the saber, and the gladius, and the arrow. And I think we're gonna drop the buccaneer. And you know the again going by turn rate on the buccaneer. And the Avenger Titan, as far as its firepower is concerned, and then we'll just we'll work we'll look at these five here and we'll compare them. So price wise, the 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 most expensive out of these five is going to be the Saber, but again, the Saber is one of the top killers in the game, has a really good turning rate, uh, and um, we'll we'll compare the firepower on them too. We've got the Hornet, which is second in price, uh, has a little bit, it, a, kind of a significantly lower turning rate than, say, like the Gladius or the Arrow. Um, and the Cutlass Black is really slow as far as turning rate is concerned. I know it's really popular and it's got a good price in, in the game, but what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate that too. So we're going to select the Saber, the Hornet, the Gladius, and the Arrow, and we're going to reset that. So now we've got it down to, um, if we're just looking at pure turning rate, um, we're, we've got probably the top turning rate ships that you can get right now in the game. Um, and um, we've got one that is the arrow that is 972,000 uh, credits. And then we've got the other two that are just above a mil. Um, and then the Sabre, which is the highest price one at 2.1 million. I think that gives us a pretty good selection to ships that we can take a look at. And they consider the arrow and the Gladius to be a light fighter. What's interesting is that the Hornet, even though the mass of the ship is... Um, uh, considered to be light, they, they actually they consider it to be a medium fighter, which is actually kind of strange. It's really not a medium fighter; it's really a, a light fighter. Uh, if you look at its mass. Uh, all right, um, and you can see that right here. I mean, seventy-four. You know, I I don't know. It's kind of in between. I don't know. I, the classification is a little kind of puts me off, kind of a little bit. I don't understand that. On on the 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 difference and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the arrow I know that that people are basically saying that the arrow hey you know what I'll tell you what we'll keep the arrow for right now all right and then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna compare these so we're gonna go to um let's see here we're gonna go up here you gotta go you gotta open this back up again I wish that they had a little bit better way of doing this but we're gonna go back to the calculator so we've got We've got the um, the saber. And we've got to go down here, so we're going to select the saber. Oh, we got to go back to calculator. I'm sorry. So we're going to select the saber. All right. And we're going to look at the weapon configuration on it. So we got the saber, and then we're going to pick the F7 Hornet. And that is a um, F7C Hornet. All right, and then we're going to select the Gladius. And I can actually kill that. We don't need that. So um, uh, that's the Aegis Gladius right here. All right. And then um, the arrow. So uh, I've got the Saber, the Hornet, the Gladius. And then we're going to select the an uh, Anvil Arrow. Okay, so that gives us a pretty good selection of ships that we can actually take a look at. And we'll go ahead and put them in alphabetical order here. So Saber, Gladius. Oop. Okay, so we've got the Anvil Arrow. We've got the 
F7 Hornet. We've got the Gladius, and then we've got the Saber. Okay, right off the bat, this has four size three weapons. It's got it comes with the Panthers, but remember that all of this can be upgraded. Uh, then on the Gladius, we've got uh, we've got three size threes. Okay, and then on the um, F7 Hornet, we have a size four that we can put in the ball. Okay, and it, it doesn't come with it. So we're not going to look at this damage, this DPS here initially, because it's important to remember that all this configuration can be changed. Then on the um, Anvil Arrow, um, we've got the um, the turret and then we've got the gimbaled size twos so these are both size ones and then you've got the g215s that are set um as size twos here showing that it's doing a thousand uh 28 damage uh, but the only problem with this is i this is the nose turret obviously right here is what this is this is so if you look at the nose of the ship this is what's stuck in the front. And then you have these gimbals that are on the wings. So the problem that I have with this is that you have these two, these gimbaled size twos that you can put in fixed size threes. So let's see if we go to here, if we go to um, a, a fixed size three, and then we go to a fixed size three here and a fixed size three here. We're essentially working with three size threes on this. And I, I wonder if it has a lot, it probably has a lot to do with its stealth capability because if you look at the anvil arrow, um, it's probably easy for it to sneak up on people. And at 285, it's the size, the mass of the ship. Um, it's, it's, it's total mass is uh, only 32,000. It's probably very, very nimble but one, but I've heard from a lot of people is that once you get hits on an anvil arrow, um, it's basically toast. It doesn't take a lot to kill it. And also the shield level. So if we're looking at the anvil arrow right here, um, as far as the shield level is concerned, it's using all stops. These can be upgraded, obviously. So if we go to military, you can take these all stops and you can bring them up to FR-66s, but is it worth the time to upgrade it if the weapon systems that you have on it can only go up to fixed size threes? So if we go back to a gimbaled size two, I don't really particularly think that this is a powerful ship. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of kills in the game, the Anvil Arrow does, but to me, it probably has a lot of kills, but once you get a, you know, once you, it probably has a lot of, like I said, to do with its size and the fact that it's difficult to hit. So that's something that you want to keep and in, take into consideration and also the cost to it's below 1 million. I'm going to eliminate that. I'm going to go with Gladius, the Saber, and um, the uh, F7 Hornet. I'm going to compare those three. So I'm going to get rid of the Anvil Arrow here, and I'm just going to go with these three ships here. All right, so if we're looking at, and also the mass of these ships, you're looking at for the F7 Hornet, it's got a higher mass um, than the Arrow did, um, but it also has a lot higher health points for the ship itself. I'm starting to think that between these three ships that probably the Sabre and the Hornet are probably going to come out on top. So let's go ahead and we'll just go. We'll start uh, uh, doing a little bit of configuration with them here. The Gladius again is comparable to the Arrow with the fixed size threes. The um, Saber is all going to be fixed size uh, weapons, but you've got four fixed size threes, and it also ha it also is stealthy. So if you look at the the if you look at the Saber as being a, a, a stealth fighter. It has really good hull health points. It has really good turning ability. Um, and it's also a stealth ship. 
So it it's capable of sneaking up on people. It probably gets a lot of the kills in the game um, by um, being able to just purely sneak up on people and take them out. And, and it starts with a tremendous amount of firepower right out of the gate. Now, this is going to be fixed weapons. I don't think that you can gimbal. Nope, you can gimbal them if you want to. But the thing is, is that once you go to gimbals, you're reducing the firepower rate of the ship. So right out of the gate, you're at 1760. If you overclock these, you're already up to 2640. And I'll show you the difference here. Okay, so the, the Hornet, again, right, it looks low to begin with here, but it has a lot of health for the ship. If I put in the ball to it, like let's say if I put in attrition, and then on the nose, you can actually put in um, the nose gimbal, which is a nice thing to be able to do with this. So like if I put in, uh, let's say if I put in some N N NDB-26s in the nose, all right, and then um, let's do something a little different here. What if I go to, uh, how about some XJs? Now, the distortion repeaters have been reduced as far as what they do. They've been cut down to about a third of what they do actually in the, in the game. But just by putting on that laser repeater, that attrition for and the DRXJ3s, and then the laser repeaters on the nose, I'm already up above the Gladius, and I'm close to what the Saber is. Now, if I were to go to, on the Hornet, if I were to, I haven't really tried out this nose gimbal yet, but what if I were to put on, like, a gimbaled size 2, and I go with an Attrition, or this Hellion. I haven't actually been able to find this Hellion this is a ballistic scatter gun. I'm already up to 3,000 damage. And But one of the things that I prefer to do on the Hornet is that because you want to get close on the Hornet and you want to have higher level shield on it, is that I'll go with a fixed size 3. So what I've been doing is I've been um, going up with like the, uh, uh, let's see, we, they put the DRXJ3 instead on the nose. Because, like I said, the distortions have been reduced in the game. They don't do anywhere near as much damage. And again, this is just taking the shields down. But what you want to do is you want to kind of... Um, there's a couple, couple of different philosophies on it. A lot of people like are take down those shields like right away, you know, and then um, once the shields are down or shut down the ship, then you start just pelting them with, you know, something else. But I prefer kind of like work on the shields a little bit because I'm not a great shot. And then um, as you drop those shields, then you're pelting them with, you know, like uh, some um, ballistics and you're pelting them with uh, the, uh, you know, like laser repeaters. I don't like the laser scatter guns. I don't like the ballistic scatter guns. I think that, you know, you've you got to get really close to use them. These are kind of like more of like a medium, medium range weapon. So if we go with the DRXJ3 and the nose, and then we pick, say, a, um, how about a, uh, we go with attritions here, or even NDBs, but we'll go, we'll go with attritions. And then on the, on here, we'll go with, this is again, a, this is a distortion. Um, let's see. Now, I'm not a fan of the Revenant. I, I think that the problem with the Revenant is that it jams too much. So we can try the, uh, how about if we do it this way? Uh, we'll go attrition and we'll go with uh, mantis. Uh, and then on the wings, we'll go with the XJ3 uh, and we'll go with an NDB30. Uh, that's really still not getting the damage up to where I would like to see it. Uh, let's see. How about if we go up with the attrition three on the nose? I wish that they had a little bit higher damage. Attrition three and attrition four. Um, that's actually not too bad. 
uh, and then the NDB30 Uh, I don't really like these bursts. Dominance 3. This is a um, laser scatter gun. And this is a ballistic scatter gun. I'm not like a big fan of using these, like I said. Getting in close. Well, let's go ahead and put that on there just for the hell of it. We'll put a ballistic scatter gun on there. Or actually, what we can do is we can go to the Predator ballistic scatter gun on the nose. Um, and keep the XJ3 and the attrition, and then we'll go up with the NB. And and I like the NDBs because they're they they have fast. Uh, then you know they repeat at a fast rate, and then we'll go with the attrition four. So we're all ready, and these this is not even overclocked. So if we overclock this, we're already up to almost five thousand. Um, and if you compare that with the overclocking on the Sabre, 2640. And th this is the standard stuff, so we can change this out. So let's say if we go to uh, all fixed size three, let's see, we go with, we don't want to go with all la uh, laser repeaters. Let's see, these are the Panthers. See, the Panthers are pretty low. So if you go with the Panther down here, 440. Let's uh, put in some attrition threes. They ha they ten have a tendency to overheat, though. Just remember that these laser repeaters are all the the attrition's on the um, uh, what is it? The um, uh, XJs or not the XJs? The um, Omsky or not the Omskys? Uh, what is it? The am I thinking of the dominance? Uh, let's see. Why am I not seeing? No, it is the attrition's. Yeah, the attrition threes. They have a tendency to. Well, they they they're supposed to put out more more power as they overheat. Uh, and then if we go to let's say, you don't really want to use. Uh, any um. Uh, ballistics, probably. Uh, maybe, let's see here. Laser repeater, that's a predator, predator ballistic. You're not, I don't know if you're going to really want to get that close. Oh, I'm thinking of the dominance. That's what I'm thinking of, right? No, not the da dominance. That's a scatter gun. If we put on like one predator and we go with the other one as an NBD. So we've got th uh, three laser repeaters and a ballistic scatter gun. And then if we overclock these, we're lower still than we are on the Hornet with the total amount of damage. And these are, you, you have the gimbal. So you have the gimbal on the ball. You have the fixed on the other three. So I kind of prefer the Hornet, but what we'll do is I think what we're gonna get do I've already got the Hornet, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get the Saber just to try it out, and we'll play around with it and see how we do with it. Um, but I'll show you the different configurations. So I was looking at the Gladius, but again, looking at the way that the Gladius is set up as far as the the just having the three fixed size three, I don't really think that that's going to be a great option. So again, um, comparing just the Hornet right here, you're looking at about a million and a half. And the other one you're looking at, you're looking at about 2.1 million. So I think that these are kind of like the two ships that you want to really focus on as far as like what you want to get next. Again, it depends on what you want to do. If you're going to get the um, Cutlass Black, remember that there's a big advantage with the Cutlass Black. Um, you can actually use it to um, pick up the Grey Cat Rock and you can mine with it. And that's obviously something that you can't do with the Sabre or the Hornet.
Anyhow, um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to play around with these settings a little bit more. Um, I think that what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to get a saber. Um, I think that, again, you've got uh, uh, four size threes. It is a little bit stealthy, um, or it is, it is set up as a stealth ship. So you can sneak up on people and get them before they know that you're actually coming at them. And I think that that is part of the reason that the um, the saber um, is rated high as far as being able to, to score a lot of, lot of kills in the game. So, and they actually rate this right up here, obviously. You know, if you look at the two ships, they're comparing, um, let's see, where is that? Here, go back to it. Best single seat fighter ship in Star Citizen is the Saber and the Hornet. Now, again, comparing, you can't really compare the Hornet to the Saber because this is a single ship or a single seat ship, and the Hornet is really a two person ship. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and head on down to Hurston. And we'll go ahead and pick up the saber, and then we'll start playing around with it. I think what I'm going to do tomorrow uh, for the next um, uh, one that I do is I'll go around and I'll pick up some equipment for this. And then um, what we'll do is we'll start playing around with some of the setups on it. So that if you're working on your own, what you can do is you can go ahead and um, you can um, try to play around with the different configurations in the calculator and see what you can come up with. And in the meantime, you can also work on building up some of the money that you're going to need to buy this because at 2.1 million, it's really not that much more expensive than than the uh, Hornet. And I already have the Hornet, so I'm not going to buy another Hornet. Um, I have the Wildfire. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and get the Saber and then play around with it. So let's go ahead and let's head on down to Hurston. And we'll go ahead and pick it up and then uh, play around and see what we can do with it. Oh, and that's the other thing that you have to do too. You have to um, you have to figure out where you can actually purchase them at. So not all ships are available at all locations. So I have to take a look at the website real quick and find out where the Aegis Saber is located. And the, they're different. It's not the same thing as the Saber Raven. You got to remember that those are two completely different ships. So let's go to economy. And um, we'll find out um, sale and rental prices. All right. And let's see here. So let's see. Where does it say that the e Aegis Sabre is located at? Okay. The Sabre is for sale at Lorville in Hurston. Okay, so it is there. It's 2.1 million, so it's available at New Deal. And remember, too, that the a lot of the stuff that's for sale in the game, once, you know, if you're, if this is the time to try stuff out. So if you're going around and you're trying out new ships and you're buying them, 
the more that you learn how to earn money in the in the game, and the more that you um, and the more that you learn how to try out some of these ships, the better off that you're going to be in the long run. So don't be afraid to spend money in the game. Always leave like a little bit of a buffers. Excuse me, leave a little bit of a buffer zone for yourself. Um, I always try to keep a few million uh, on hand, you know, so that I'm not blowing everything that I've got, and then I ended up end up with nothing. You know, that's always something that you need to consider if you're if you're earning money, you know, and you and you get up to like, oh, I got 2.1 million, and I'm, now I'm gonna buy a saver. Um, that's really kind of like the wrong way to think about it. You, what you want to do is you want to earn enough to buy the ship um, and then have enough money left over so that you've got a little bit of a buffer zone too. So whether or not a million is enough for you to have to do that or, you know, a few hundred thousand is enough to do that. The problem is, is that if you need to quickly claim your ship and you have to pay to do that, um, and it costs you money to do that, and you can't do it because you're completely out of funds, then basically you're just going to have to sit there and wait for your ship, you know, on, on claiming it. The good thing is, is that even if you completely lose your ship in here, it's blown up and you're completely down to zero funds, you can still claim your ship. Um, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to do that. And I actually already have the anvil arrow here. So how about if we do this, we'll take the arrow down to buy the saber. All right, so we're gonna go down to pad one. I lose my patience waiting for these elevators. I know a lot of other people do too. <laughs> they take a tremendous amount of time to get here. We're not even actually that far away. Pad one, and I know a lot of people do that too. So you know, if you're if you're going to like one of the pads, that's five kilometers away, waiting for the elevator get up, uh, get back. They're kind of stinks sometimes. It's amazing how fast the time flies when you're doing this stuff. Um, uh, I really hope that I'm helping people. Um, again, feel free to comment uh, if you're watching these videos now or if you watch the videos later, like watching on, on YouTube. Uh, I know that I have a lot of trouble getting it across to people uh, in a concise way sometimes. I don't mean to do that. Uh, so I apologize for that. And I do have, I've mentioned it before, but I do have a hearing problem. So I don't communicate with people in the game because a lot of times it's coming through on my speakers and I can't understand what they're saying. I'm actually hearing impaired pretty, um, not terribly bad, but I, um, I can not understand a lot of, I've lost a lot of my high end hearing over the years, so I can't understand what people are telling me you know, the speech is the biggest problem. So they'll like come right up and me and they'll talk to me and I can't understand a word that they're saying. So I don't really communicate in the game with people. Oh, there we go, we got the engines on. All systems online. Take off and I consider some of these like some of these little ships I consider them to be more mostly just like little hoppers to get you from where you need to go like the Aurora is really just like kind of like a hopper for me but it's still a fun ship to play around with don't get me wrong I don't mean that in a negative way it's still a very capable little ship you know if you upgrade it thank you and please visit again 
Now you're going to want to be careful if you go ahead and you purchase the, the Sabre. If you change out those shields, remember that if you go from those shimmers to, um, you know, like FRs or something like that, now automatically you're going from not being a stall ship anymore to, um, you know, to being something that people can see. And the whole purpose of having it as a stall ship is so that you can sneak up on people and take them out you know, when they're unaware that you're near them. And if you're doing bounty hunting, um, bounty hunting is something that people do in here a lot. Uh, and um, you don't want that person to know that you're coming up on them. So you're going to use that stealth capability to your best, um, you know, to the best that you can. And you're going to want to take that person out uh, without them. You're going to want to sneak up behind them and you're going to want to start shooting at them. And then before they even know it, you know, then they're that, that they're dead. So and then you're you're collecting their bounty so we'll spend a little bit of time playing around with it and configuring it and see how we can do it we'll just play around with the ai i am not much of a pvp person and i'm not gonna make any uh, bones about that i mean some people are really good at pvp and they come in here and that's all they do they're they're they they just get a lot of satisfaction and fun out of doing pvp But that is really not me. At some point in time, I want to try to get into doing a little bit more, doing a little bit of dip, bit more of the bounty hunting. But uh, for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and pass on it. And at some point in time, you're going to lose all this stuff anyhow that you purchase in game. Landing complete. Have a pleasant stay. Wow. Man, I love the track IR in here now. I can't even say how much, how much of an improvement it is. And I jumped onto a EU server. And part of the reason that I did that is that I've been having a little bit, tr little, little, little bit of trouble on the U.S. servers today for some reason. I'm not really sure what's going on, but um, for some reason, uh, sometimes the U.S. servers get a little bit uh, whacked out, and I, I don't know if it's the number of people that are on them or that they just get dirty or the internet connection kind of gets a little bit flaky, but they have a tendency to kind of get um, to the point where they're just not almost not even usable. You'll go to purchase gear at a specific location and the stuff doesn't even spawn in on the shelves. And you're like, oh man, what the hell is going on here? I can't even buy anything. And you wasted all that time going there. So if you run into that situation where stuff is getting really laggy, um, and right now the BWN is like over 1.0, um, I already know that, you know, stuff is going to be available uh, just by uh, looking at that BWN. All right, we'll go ahead and store that. And we're going to come on over here to uh, New Deal. And you can actually walk outside here um, and you can check out some of the new ships. We've got some starter ships out there. Uh, we have the um, uh, we have the little uh, Mustang. I can't I don't remember if it's the Alpha or what, um, but that's a really good starter ship. To be honest with you, um, that's the butt Mustang Beta. They're really good starter ships, and the nice thing about them is that they're not expensive, but they can also haul cargo. So if you come to the, I believe if you come to the back here, maybe maybe not. I thought it had a little cargo chute. Well, maybe it doesn't. But the Mustangs had a little cargo hold. But I think you can actually put, uh, you can carry SCU in them. Now the Saber is a pure. Uh, fighter and, and it's a stealth fighter so you cannot put anything in it at all um, it, you can't even carry a box in it um, but I will show you that you can carry boxes in the Aurora 
and um, you can actually carry several of them. They've they changed it back a while ago. Yeah, it, if you tried to carry a box up into the Aurora, what would happen is that you would drop the box, uh, and and it would fall outside of the ship, and then and then the box would just be sitting there on the ground. Okay, so we've got our Stalker, we've got our Titan, which we eliminated from the, the, the run-up. We've got the Warlock. Again, based on the type of whip weapons that you can carry, really not um, much of a, uh, a choice there. Um, this is something completely different. This is a bomber. It's a stealth bomber. And I'm not even really going to be getting into doing that in the game. We've got the Gladius. And we looked at the weapon configuration on that and decided that that really is not what we wanted to go for. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for the Sabre here. And it's a fairly good-sized ship, and it has a fairly good-sized um, hull, you know, as far as the, head, the, the health points that it has. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to purchase that. Total transaction cost $2.1 million. Confirm the pur purchase. Dealership. Finest purveyor of pre all right, vessels transaction all succeeded. Now I'm down to current balance 3.3 million. All right, and we're going to fly this little puppy back up to the um, Evers Harbor. And actually, we have enough time that we can actually test it out in the stock mode. We'll go up to, we'll take one of the missions doing the, um, the, the PDC, uh, um, uh, satellite. We'll go ahead and give it a try and then we'll knock it off for today and we'll start doing some playing around with the different configurations. And I don't really worry about the money in the game. Um, I earn so much money doing mining. And you can earn so, a lot of money really quickly just doing these these um, uh, illegal surveillance things too. I mean, it's really not even it's really not even an issue at this point in time. So again, like I said, once you start going or get going in this, you're going to find out how easy it is to actually make money in the game. All right, hang or nine, and eventually it, you're just not even going to be worried about it. At first, it seems like a little bit daunting. You're like, oh, you know, that seems like really hard to make money in Star Citizen. And then after a while, you'll be like, oh, it's like really easy. It's a piece of cake. You know, a lot of people love coming in here and just doing bounty hunting. That's all they do. So this is just the stock saber. Um, it has the four pan Panther repeaters, the size threes. And those are actually pretty powerful weapons, you know, right from the get-go. So that's cool how the weapon actually pulled back to let you get into the pilot seat. That's interesting, the way that's configured. The Aegis ships, or Aegis, are actually really cool looking <laughs> on the way that they're set up. The Vanguard Warden is an absolute screamer of a ship to fly. It's really fun. All right, got a straight and track IR. All right, IR. All right, we'll power up. Aegis combat system activated. Systems green. And we'll go ahead and call for departure. And we're not even going to do anything. We're not even going to overclock anything. We're going to leave everything stock. You are clear to launch. And we're, we're not, you know, you can't gimbal anything on this. It's got arresters and thunderbolts. Um, and we're gonna end up changing that out. We'll work on that tomorrow. I don't like the visibility in this. That's dude. Think that's kind of one of the things that's a little bit of a downside in this. As I can't see directly above me, and coming from somebody that uh, does um, uh, DCS and uh, plays around with hornets and vipers or falcons, if you want to call them a falcon, um, I don't like the the not being able to see behind me is something that really bugs me. Alright, let's go ahead and climb up a little bit. We've got about five minutes left, so we're going to go ahead and see if Thank we can you. grab one of those missions real again. quick. Alright, and it's not giving me one of them right now. We're probably going to have to climb up to... Uh, Probably gonna have to go up to uh, Everest. Okay, there's Everest. Cool, 
Well, sure. I think this will be fun to play around and just learn how to use it. I always uh, hit um, auto lock, you know, look for enemies and friendlies, you know, when I come in. Um, the button that I have set on my throttle is down, is uh, set to um, uh, lock on nearest enemy target. And again, if you scan, um, you are not stealthy anymore. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. So let's see if we can grab one of those uh, PDC monitor missions here real quick. Uh, go to Merc. Oh, it's not giving it to me. And I don't know if I want to fly to... Where is this at here? Can't do a deliveries with this. I don't really want to do Bounty Hunter yet. Well, let's see how we do. Well, let's land and we'll see how we do against Claim Jumper real quick. I'm running out of time though for today. I want to land here so that it associates me with the pad and I'll spawn back here. Once you're on the pad or you're within a certain distance of the pad, it'll, um, it recognizes your ship as, as being um, originating from here and I'll spawn back here if I get destroyed. Stay in for a few minutes longer. We'll see how we get how this works out. That is a cool looking little ship. Landing complete. For a single seater. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Halt illegal surveillance. There we go. Okay, I'll take that offer. All right, and now it's tracked. All right, cool. Alright, we got one. Alright, landing gear up. Landing gear rejected. Okay, there we go. It's only 53k out, so we'll go there. Is that Magda? Or is that Aaron? I think that's Ariel. Thank you. Yeah, that's Ariel. Alright, let's see how this little guy does. Again, the whole idea is to just come in here and have fun with these different models that you're playing around with and see how they do. And they're putting together a tremendous amount of information on what people are flying around with, what they're using, you know, like how they're how they're using the different ships, you know, if they're bounty hunting, if they're transporting, you know, how the ships stand up and you know, fighting and uh, things like that and um, so I mean they're compiling just a tremendous amount of data from people being in here and playing around with this stuff right now it's not really about hey does everything really work you know is it working a hundred percent you know is it doing what it's supposed to do um, it's more about um, you know just finding out like what people's habits are and also trying to fix things you know and make it Oh, I have to wait for the spooling to complete. I wasn't waiting. Yeah, we may want to put a different quantum drive in here. We'll, we'll, we'll play around with the uh, different setups, because that takes a while to, to spool up. All right, what do we got here? Okay, there's a PDC monitor right there. We came dropped right in on one. 
And we're stealthy. We haven't changed anything. So we're a very stealthy ship right now. We're one of the, one of the stealthiest ships in the sim. But we don't have gimbal weapons now, so we have to basically get within range. And the Panthers are doing a pretty good job right there. All right, that was quick. Wow. All right, nice. All right, let's see if we can find the other ones. Wow, that was three bursts in less than a second and a half each one. I think I'm going to like this ship. See if we come across an enemy fighter and see how we do against an enemy fighter. Uh, okay, we've got a closer one over here. We'll go to this one first. Alright. Man, this is fun. And I'll tell you what, this this game has really evolved so much and I, I just love it now because it's so much fun to come in here and be able to play around with this stuff. Remember, um, since it's not gimbaled, wow, holy smokes, that was fast. Since it's not gimbaled, you gotta really, you gotta make sure that you're pointing right at the. Alright. Very cool. Another PDC monitor. Well, I was hoping that an enemy would pop in. We might have to wait around for a minute. Oh, going way too fast. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Are these Panthers are fast. Okay. All right. Uh, well, there's 20,000 UEC. <laughs> Where are the enemy? I think they were too afraid. <laughs> Let's see if we can go back. Oh, there's gotta be a bad guy around here somewhere. There's the, there's the Comrade. We'll just hang out here for a few minutes and just see if one pops up. Anyhow, um, I hope that you're enjoying watching the videos. Um, I, I haven't had uh, a ton of people watching, but I have a few people here and there, and I'm glad that you're taking the time to watch it. Uh, at some point in time, maybe I'll uh, be able to take these down uh, to some smaller clips. Uh, for right now, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of doing this as a tour so people can see some of the different capabilities of the sim. Uh, and so if you, uh, actively comment on either channel if you want to use the Han Fastoff um, Daniel O uh, or um, uh, I get them mixed up but the, the you could just you, either one works Han Fastoff Daniel O for Twitch or Han Fastoff Daniel O for the um, uh, YouTube uh, you can find the videos either way or, you know, just search, search, do a search with uh, um, Dar Citizen and Han Fostoff, Daniel Lowe, and you'll they'll, they'll, they'll bring it up. And then um, please feel free to comment on my YouTube channel if you have suggestions or uh, pass it on to the people on uh, Twitch if you know anybody that would like to watch these. I do these uh, streams every Monday through Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern. And... Um, uh, like I said, I welcome anybody coming in and commenting or participating or sending me messages, you know, through the chat. Anyhow, thank you very much for uh, watching, and I'll catch you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern.